the Corinthian church, Paul and Sothenes, he's training Sothenes because one thing about it, if you walk with the apostolic honey, you got to be able to handle some things. The apostolic would draw battles to your life. The apostolic would draw the enemy in your court. Oh yes, it will not. If you walk with the apostolic honey, about it, if you walk with the apostolic honey, you got to be able to handle some things. If you walk with the apostolic honey, you got to be able to handle some things. The apostolic would draw battles to your life. The apostolic would draw the enemy in your court. Oh yes, it will not. The apostolic would draw battles to your life. The apostolic would draw the enemy in your court. Oh yes, it will not. We don't even try to do it, but the power that we walk in is a yoke destroying, burn removing power. We begin to challenge principalities when we walk up in a place. We say you have occupied long enough. You have been here long enough. You have caused bondage long enough. You stuck people in long enough. But the true apostolic will begin to drop that anointing. So what happens is Paul walks in with an anointing that they have not seen upon a human being. But when God saved Paul for 14 years, he put him on the backside of the Arabian Desert and taught him the Bible. Took the Pentateuch, regurgitated in his spirit. Took the Torah and regurgitated in his spirit. Took Psalms, regurgitated in his spirit. Took Proverbs, gave him the wisdom of it. Kings allow him to know the throne room. Got him there for 14 years. Two sevens. God, I'm getting ready to give you double for your trouble. Allow him to know the throne room. Got him there for 14 years. Two sevens. God, I'm getting ready to give you double for your trouble.
Hey, man, before I uh, answer the question we left off with, uh, why would the enemy want the gates to be open? Man, I just want you to know that my heart is very heavy and my heart hurts for the state that the church is in. The condition of the body of Christ is, is weary. It's broken down. It's divided. It's crippled. And there's a reason why all these things are going on. The reason why the body of Christ is in the condition that it's in, it's in this place not because we don't pray, not because we don't fast, not because we don't evangelize, not because we don't go to church, not because we don't have Bible study. The church is in the condition that it's in because there's a lack of truth in the pulpit. And there is a lack of shepherds who have the true heart of God that will take time to rightly divide the scriptures to make sure that you are getting the pure doctrine of our faith. Uh, the Bible gives us the command to stick and stay or remain in the doctrines of the apostles. Uh, sound doctrine is very, very, very important. There's no shortcuts to it. It requires a tremendous amount of diligence. It requires discipline. It requires study. And unfortunately, that's what's lacking. And I believe there's a secondary reason why we don't teach sound doctrine. is because sound doctrine doesn't appeal to the flesh. Sound doctrine cries to the spirits of men. Men, and it won't get a big crowd. It won't get a big response. And to be honest, when you preach truth and you stand up for truth, it's going to cause you to be persecuted and it's going to cause men to speak evil of you. Just like this video is going to make many of you do to me right now. Men, I'm releasing this video and I already know in advance that you're going to speak evil of me. You're going to say I'm judging and you're going to say that um, I'm not walking in love. But believer, I just can't ignore my responsibility as a true man of God. And the Bible says we are supposed to contend and we're supposed to fight for our faith. Whenever false teachers come, and Jesus said many have already come. Man, Paul warns the church that many false teachers and false prophets will come. And when they come spreading their lies... There is a mandate and a responsibility for those who know the truth to stand up and speak and, and to, to be willing to even lay down their lives for the truth that the integrity of our faith can be kept and it can be preserved. The Bible says, even way back in the Old Testament, that if a watchman sees the destruction that's coming and he doesn't open his mouth to say anything, doesn't the Bible say the blood of everybody is on his hands? Church, I love you. I'm not jealous of Helen Sadler. I'm not envious of her. I'm worried though. I'm worried because the things that I heard out of her own mouth are not consistent with the scriptures. We left off with the question, why does the enemy want you to open up your gates? I Man, if you will remember, maybe you'll go back and rewind this, and I pray you watch it a couple times, and you pray about it, and you weigh it with Scripture, and you really let the Spirit of God lead you to truth. Because listen, if it's not Scripture, church, we are to reject it. If I'm misleading you right now, and if I'm not telling you the truth, Call me a false prophet. Man, d d man, discard me. Make a video about me. But I assure you, the things that I, I'm saying are true. I've studied to show myself approved, rightly dividing the scriptures. 
But the reason why the enemy wants you to open the gates, if you go back to the beginning of the video, man, she makes an interesting statement. I slowed the video down and I stopped it and I made reference to it. In the very beginning, she says, walking with the apostolic, number one, will bring battles into your life. It will invite enemy or it'll draw enemies into your courts. Listen, church, that is not what happens when you walk with the true apostle. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 4 that the true apostle is a gift of grace to the church. That this was given to the body after Jesus Christ ascended into the heavens. And after he ascended into the heavens, he gives gifts of grace to the church. Some to be apostles, some to be prophets, some to be evangelists, some to be teachers, and some to be pastors. And the Bible says that this fivefold ministry, this apostle, because that's what we're talking about right now, that they will equip the saints, that they will edify the saints, that they will lift up the saints, and they, they will bring out of them and teach them the, the word to speak the words of truth. And, and, and they'll grow up into the head with his Christ. The Bible doesn't teach when you walk with an apostle, battles will come into your life. It doesn't, nowhere in the scriptures does it say, when you walk with an apostle, it will draw enemies into your court. So clearly, out of this woman's own mouth, she's talking about, an apostolic anointing that is not consistent with an anointing a biblical apostle will have. Man, in fact, she tells us out of her own mouth the source of this apostolic anointing, this false apostolic anointing. She tells us where it's from. She says, it's right out of the high place. See, you have to understand spirits are prideful, spirits are arrogant, and spirits love to tell on themselves. All you got to do is just listen, and the spirit will tell on itself. Man, this spirit is saying that it comes down, its origin, its beginning is right out of the high place. When you go and you look through the scriptures, and you begin to make reference of the high place, go to Holman's Bible Dictionary. Man, the Bible dictionary will even tell you about the high place. The high place is a satanic realm. It is the high places where a pagan sacrifices are made. It's a place of occultic prostitution, spiritual fornication, where people are led to, they're drawn away to, where they begin to be intimate with spirits that are not the Holy Spirit. And I believe that's exactly what you're seeing in this video. You are seeing flesh becoming intimate with a spirit that is not the Holy Spirit. Because listen, the Holy Spirit would never twist God's word. The Holy Spirit would never speak things that are inconsistent with the word of truth. And already from the very beginning, she says, if you walk with an apostle, battles are going to come into your life. And it's going to draw enemies into your life courts my friends what she's talking about is a satanic fake apostolic anointing she says it right she says it right out of her own mouth it comes from the high place look it up and so what does this demonic spirit want to do what is this fake apostolic anointing want to accomplish in your life Man, she goes on to say, because remember, all spirits are arrogant. Fake, false spirits, demonic spirits are all arrogant. They all want to boast. They all want to speak their agenda. So in the very beginning, this satanic spirit is announcing its agenda. It says, I want to bring battles into your life. Man, and then after I bring battles into your life, I want to be drawn into your court. I'm going to get you to... Open up your gates. Remember at the end of the video, it's screaming. It says, open up your eye gates. Open up your mouth gates. 
Man, this false spirit, this false satanic apostolic anointing is boasting that it's going to get entry into your courts. Man, it even goes on, and out of her own mouth, she goes further, and sticking in context. Well, so she starts the video when she says, this walking with the apostle will bring enemies into your courts and bring battles. And then at the, the end of the video, right before the, where she asks for the gates, man, she says, I don't know if you can handle my praise. I don't know if you can handle my dimension. Well, what dimension is she talking about? This spirit is still talking about the high place. Man, and he say, and then she goes on and, and she goes on to say, this, this demonic spirit through her goes on to say, Man, I don't want to hurt you, but my praise my, may hurt you. Listen, there's nothing apostolic about praising God and having it hurt the people who are around them. Listen, praise does not hurt the body of Christ. If anything, praise brings deliverance. Praise in it is, is the lifting up of Jesus Christ. So clearly, this praise that she's talking about is not biblical. Its fruits aren't love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, self-control. In fact, the fruit of this praise, she says, it's going to be hurtful. Hurtful. Man, what, what did the, the, the real apostle Paul say? The Apostle Paul said, sing new songs and sing hymns. Admonish and encourage. That's what he says the fruits of the songs. A true apostle sings. Can you hear the love of God in a real apostle's song? It admonishes you to be more. It encourages you to know and abide and remain in the love of God that your soul would be encouraged and that it, it would be delighted in your position in Christ. But not the praise of this demonic spirit speaking through Helen Sadler. She says it's going to hurt you. Then not only does it say it's going to hurt you as if you don't know this spirit yet. If you haven't discerned this spirit yet, she goes on to misrepresent Paul and says, she misrepresents the scriptures again. Again, when you talk about the spirit of God, you don't misrepresent the scriptures. Man, the Bible says that the fruit of the flesh is heresy. And that's what these things are coming out of her mouth are. They're heresies. They're, they're inconsistent with the text. She says that Paul... After he comes out of his time where he, was, where he was receiving a revelation of Jesus Christ, not being taught the Bible. She said when, when, when Paul went away, God was teaching him the Bible. That's not true. Because the Bible says, man, that Paul was a Pharisee of Pharisees. That he, he, was, he sat under the finest teacher in order to be a Pharisee at the lowest level. Look it up. It's in your church history. You have to be able to quote verbatim, word for word, the first five books of the Bible. So Paul already knew the scriptures. Paul was already familiar with the prophets. Man, before this, what he was lacking in his religion and, and what he was lacking in his religiosity was a revelation of Jesus Christ. He, in all of his religion, he did not understand the gospel. And he, and, he go, and he says that even in Romans 10. He says, man, I was jealous. I was zealous for the law. Man, I was, I, was, I was excited about the practices of church, but I was ignorant of the teachings which come by righteousness. He's talking about the cross and how we are made right standing because of the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. But Helen Sadler does not tell you that. She says he's away as though he was ignorant and unlearned and he's being taught the scriptures. Then she says after he comes out of this place of being before God for 14 years, and this is where I just lose it, church. This is the thing that frustrates me. It's the thing that breaks my heart. Man, it, this is so fleshly. It's demonic. She says, she says 14 that's two sevens. Now God is going to give you double for your trouble. Listen, first of all, when the Apostle Paul 
was away learning of the Lord for the 14 years, it wasn't trouble. What is troubling about getting a deep, life-changing revelation of Jesus Christ? And when Paul came out of that place, his life was far from easy. Man, he had more suffering than anybody. Remember what God said to Ananias in Acts? He spoke to Ananias and he says, I'm going to show the Apostle Paul how much he's going to suffer. He's going to suffer more than anybody. God didn't give the Apostle Paul double for his trouble after he returned, after being 14 years. In fact, the Bible says he was persecuted, even stoned, shipwrecked, betrayed. He lived poor and broken and humble. The Bible says in the end of Galatians, he said, Apostle Paul with a broken heart, he says, he says man, just, just leave me alone. I bear on my body the marks of Jesus Christ. Paul said, I, I've been persecuted so much, I just haven't been broken in my heart. On my body, I have the scars to prove that I've suffered for Jesus. There was no double for his trouble. But that's not the thing that messed me up. What messed me up is when she said 14 and then she broke it down into two sevens and then made a futuristic proclamation. Guess what that is, church? That is numerology. Numerology, and I posted the websites where you can go and look this up yourself on the video. Numerology is associated with witchcraft and it's one of the practices of the Wiccan religion. So tell me, why would the Holy Spirit practice divination? Why would the Holy Spirit use a Wiccan practice to proclaim a truth over your life? The answer is, church, he wouldn't. What you witnessed on that video was not the Spirit of God, but that was a demonic spirit boasting and feeling so comfortable in the house of the Lord because that spirit knew there was no true prophet there and there was no true apostle there and there was nobody in the house that loved truth enough to weigh what she was saying by the word of God. No Bereans. And so the church did the impossible when she makes this proclamation of divination, the satanic proclamation over the church's life that he will get double for his trouble, the church freaks out, the music starts playing, people start dancing. And it's sad. It's sad that there's no more discernment. There's no more knowledge of the scriptures than that. Another thing that she made reference to is she said, the Apostle Paul walked in anointing never before seen or never before witnessed on a human being. Church, listen, do you not know what the anointing is? The anointing is Jesus Christ. And to say that there is a new anointing is to say that there is a new Christ. And that's exactly what this pagan spirit, this demonic spirit that is operating in the church under a false apostolic anointing, that's what its agenda is, to introduce you to a new Christ. You know what a new Christ is, church? That is the Antichrist. Do you not remember what John said? The Antichrist has been in the world from the very beginning. Did you not read 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 where it starts talking about because you, church, didn't love truth, because you didn't receive a love for truth, God handed you over to a delusion and that delusion gave you things that looked like church, it gave you great times in the house of God, it gave them signs, wonders, and miracles, and, and while the church was dancing under this delusion, the Antichrist was sitting up and taking his place in the church house, sitting up and setting himself above all things that are God. Is that not what's happening here? You haven't loved the truth. 
and you've came into an agreement with a satanic anointing that has uh, manipulated the scriptures, who has bore false witness of the testimonies of scriptures, trying to introduce you to a new anointing, and then why you are all worked up in a state of frenzy, all when your when your heart's open and when your emotions are and your flesh is all stirred up. The wisdom of this demonic spirit says, Now open up your eye gates. Open up your mouth gates. Open up your ear gates. Say yeah! And you begin to shout. Guess what happened? Because you came into an agreement with that false spirit. You opened yourself up for the Spirit to do what he said at the very beginning. I'm bringing battles into your life. And you've drawn the enemies into your courts. The reason why you needed to open up your gates is because a believer, the Bible says in Ephesians chapter 1 verse 13, after he receives the knowledge, or the, after he receives the word of truth, gospel of grace and believes upon it the Bible says the Holy Spirit comes in and seals him see that's how you know that spirit that was speaking was not the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit in the life of a true believer someone truly born again is already on the inside of them so the Holy Spirit would not be Telling you to open up your gate so it could come in because it's already in there. But this false spirit, this satanic spirit, this, this spirit that's masquerading under the church under a false apostolic anointing, it knows that you're sealed. And the only way he can get access is if you give him permission. You come into covenant. And that's what you're doing in this state of not knowing. You've opened yourself up to witchcraft. Church, we preach about witchcraft in church. We preach about false teachers and false apostles. But yet, when real men of God indict them on the fruit of their own lips. People stick up for them. And they defend them so they can stay where they are and continue to wreak havoc on the church. That's what's happening right now. And that's what's going to happen after I release this video. Because the Bible says the false prophets prophesy and the, and the priests follow suit, follow suit what? Following after what the false prophets prophesy. And the Bible says the people love it so. Is that what's happening here, church? This demonic spirit's operating in the church. Sp speaking satanic proclamations over your life using numerology and divination. Does your flesh love its soul? I believe there's someone that's going to hear my voice and is going to be alarmed by what you hear. See, there's some people that are listening. You've been trying to leave this ministry or you've been trying to leave other apostolic ministries that are operating under this same falsehood, but you haven't because you have been ensnared by this spirit of witchcraft. You leave and something just keeps pulling you back. And you can't, and for the life of you, you don't understand why you keep going back to the mess and you keep subjecting yourself to more mess and, you, and more abuse. Be free. In the mighty name of Jesus, I break every spirit of witchcraft on your life and I command you in the name of Jesus to be free. My advice to you, believer. My advice to anybody that can hear what it is the Spirit of the Lord is saying. Anybody that can hear, let them hear. And my advice to you is run. 
Get out of there. The true cry of spirit is, uh, the true cry of God's spirit is saying, come out from among them, people. And I made this video knowing that I'm going to suffer, knowing that my name is going to be slammed by the people. I know you're going to try to say, oh, there goes Jeremy again. People already say that I'm controversial. And that's okay with me. Because they called Elijah a troublemaker of Israel. No one liked it when Elijah came. And then you're going to say, oh, he thinks he's Elijah now. No. My name is Jeremy. And I come to you tonight in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I come to you with the heart of a true shepherd. A shepherd that wants to lay his life down for you. So you can be free. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I ask you right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I ask you, Lord, to touch Helen Sadler. God, right where she's at, Lord, tonight, I pray that she would know your love like never before, God. Father, I pray that you would send your true spirit. And Father, I ask you, Lord, to begin to move upon her and move in her like you've never moved upon her and in her before. Father, I ask you to give her discernment. Father, I ask you, Lord, to open up the scriptures and may she see the truth of the gospel, Jesus Christ and him crucified, God. Father, may you bless her with righteousness that comes from you. God, will you begin to lead her in the ways of righteousness? May you begin to lead her and draw her into the truth that, Lord, that you can take that awesome vessel, that you can take that awesome voice, and you can take all of those gifts and get glory out of it, God. Father, I pray that you would keep the people that are under her, Lord, as, as she's opened herself up for a false spirit to come and talk to her. And Lord, as, as a false apostolic anointing has rested on her, God, I pray you would liberate people and that you would set them free right now in the name of Jesus. Father, I pray that you, by your Spirit, would cause a mighty exodus to come out from among them. In her church and every other church in the greater Seattle region, God, or, or in the northwest, down the west coast, through the south, the midwest, and the east coast, overseas, let there be an exodus. Let the people of God, let the remnant of God, let the ecclesia come out. And be free that they would know the joy of their salvation. That they would know the riches of your grace. That they would know the joy of their salvation. That they would know what it means to have friendship and have peace with you, God. Set them free from that demon of religion right now. In Jesus' name. If you have any questions, man, email me. Prophet Jeremy A. Dot Smith 206 at gmail.com. That's J E R O M Y A and the little period sign Smith S M I T H 206 at gmail.com. Pray you will contact me. I'm praying for you. And even all those people who are going to judge me and speak evil of me and say that what I did was wrong, I encourage you, go back and you read the Bible. I, I encourage you to look up what is, what is the, the New Testament pattern given how you handle false teachers. Because that's what you witnessed. I just showed you how she was twisted the scriptures. I just told you how the Spirit was speaking through her that wasn't the Holy Ghost. I showed you. She said the source of her anointing was from a high place. That's a demonic place where they practice pagan sacrifices. 
She said that's where that her apostolic anointing comes from. Not Christ, not heaven, but, an ap uh, but a demonic, satanic realm that you can't handle. You can't handle that. You can't handle the praise. Her praise might even hurt you, the Spirit said. I know that wasn't you talking, Helen. I know that was a spirit, a demonic spirit, who was boasting. And I command you to be free right now in the name of Jesus. And Helen, I humbly speak to you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Three things. If you are going to continue to misrepresent the scriptures, you have shown that you're not fit to be a preaching minister. You're not fit to be in the pulpit speaking to God's people. Because the Bible says, in order to be approved, so you can be called, but you might not be approved. To be approved to be in that place, you have to rightly divide the scriptures. You have to study to show yourself approved so that you'll be a good workman. Laying a good foundation. The second thing I want to tell you is because you've given yourself to doctrine that is not consistent with the sound doctrine of the New Testament. You've opened yourself up to a spirit that is not the spirit of the Lord. And you, the voice you're hearing is not the Holy Ghost. It is a spirit of divination. And I encourage you to take time by yourself and repent. Man, go to people you trust that you're in covenant with and have them break that demonic spirit off of your life. Or number three, you can deny everything that I said. You can keep talking your false gospel and you can keep operating under your false spirit. And that's okay. But I ask you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ to no longer call yourself a Christian. Because there's nothing Christian about misrepresenting Jesus Christ. And there's nothing Christian about operating under a spirit of witchcraft in the house of the Lord. And if you want to have a group or you want to have a club, call it that. But don't call it a church. In the words of John Calvin, in his book, The Institutes of Christian Religion, where there is no truth, there is no church. And I speak humbly to you. I speak to you in love. And you can say that I'm judging you. But Helen, I'm not attacking your character. I'm not attacking your person. But I am confronting that demonic spirit that I witnessed on your video. People of God, don't fear. When you go to leave that church, you run and you don't look back and you don't let anybody ensnare you. You don't have to respect an authority that's being used demonically. Be free. I love you. Contact me. Hit me on Facebook. I love you, church. Be free. In Jesus' name.